Hello. Hello. So we want to start off today by asking you a few questions. So I'm going to give you two options and I want you to put your hand up for which you would prefer. Don't worry about what your friends think. We want to know what you really think. Okay, so here's your first two options. Would you rather play with orangutans in the rainforest or swim with dolphins? So hands up orangutans, hands up dolphins. Would you rather trek on a pony in the Rocky Mountains or go on an African safari? So hands up trekking on a pony and hands up going on an African safari. <laughs> Would you rather go snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia or climb Mount Everest? So that's snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef, hands up, or climb Mount Everest. We live on an amazing planet. Our theme for this half term is respect. And our theme for this week is respecting our planet. So we're going to jump straight into our thankful time and we're going to take a little bit of time out to thank God for the amazing beauty of the natural world that we live in. I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done I want to be To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in So our theme is respecting our planet. So why should we respect our planet? Well, we've got a little quiz which will hopefully get you thinking about why our planet is so special and get you thinking about how amazing it is and why we should respect it and take care of it. Okay, so here's my first question for you. Scientists call planet Earth the Goldilocks planet? Or do they call it the Superman planet? Or do they call it the Cinderella planet? Which do you think? Okay, let's get you to put your hands up. Hands up if you think the scientists call planet Earth the Goldilocks planet. Okay, what about the Superman planet? Put your hands up. Okay, and what about the Cinderella planet? Stick your hands up. Okay. Well, those of you who put your hand up for Goldilocks are right. Scientists call planet Earth the Goldilocks planet. Why? Because what did Goldilocks find with the porridge and the chair and the bed? She found that baby bears was just right. And scientists call planet Earth the Goldilocks planet because there are so many things that are just right. Okay, so next question for you. Would it be better for planet Earth 
to be just 2% closer to the sun or 2% further away? Well, the answer is actually neither. 2% closer or further away in the context of our solar system is nothing. But if we're 2% further away, there'd be no life at all on our planet because all the water in the world would be frozen solid. And if we were just 2% closer, we'd all cook. There'd be no life because there'd be no water, not even the oceans, because everything would have dried up because it was so hot. So the Earth is the Goldilocks planet because it's not too far from the sun and it's not too close to the sun. It's just right. Okay, so here's another question for you. As the Earth circles the sun, is it wonky? So again, let's do hands up. Hands up if you think the planet Earth goes around the sun upside down. Okay, hands up who thinks it goes around the sun perfectly straight, like planet B, okay? And hands up, who thinks the Earth is slightly wonky as it circles the sun? Well, everyone who said C, that it's slightly wonky, you're right, as the Earth travels around the sun, it is wonky, it's tilted at an angle of exactly 23 and a half degrees. And if it weren't tilted, we wouldn't have any seasons. There'd be no summer, winter, autumn or spring. The weather would be really messed up and there'd be a lot more land that we wouldn't be able to live on because it would be desert. Earth is a Goldilocks planet because its wonkiness, its tilt is just right. If we were any more or any less wonky, any less tilted, there'd be no life. But again, it's just right. Now here's another amazing fact. I wonder if any of you know which planet this is. Let me give you a clue. It's the biggest planet in our solar system. That's right, it's Jupiter. Now another reason why the planet Earth is a Goldilocks planet is because we have the right friends in our galaxy. You see, Jupiter is like a giant bodyguard for planet Earth. Because of its massive size, its gravitational force sucks comets and asteroids into it so that they don't hit into planet Earth instead. You see, if Jupiter were in a different orbit, or if it were any bigger or any smaller, planet Earth would be smashed to bits. So that's another reason why planet Earth is a Goldilocks planet. Isn't it amazing? Scientists have discovered there are over 200 Goldilocks factors. That's 200 reasons why planet Earth is just right. And I want to show you an amazing number. I don't even know what this number is, but I know it's really big. This is the statistical chance of all these factors being just right. Whoa, that's a big number. I think you should ask your teachers what that number is. Our planet is amazing, isn't it? And we need to look after it because it's really important to God and it's our home. As Christians, we believe that God created the world and the universe. But that's not to say that Christians ignore all the scientific discoveries that are being made. These scientific discoveries, some of which we've had a little think about today, show us even more just how amazing God's creation is and how clever he is. So we are going to have our Bible reading now, and it's from the very start of the Bible, the book of Genesis, and we are going to watch an animation to help us picture what it says in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovered above the surface of the waters. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness night. 
Evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called this the sky. Evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land, and the waters seas. God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with plants, trees, and trees that produce seeds that grow fruit. And God saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. God made two great lights, the sun and the moon. Then he painted the night sky with stars and saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind. God saw that it was good. On the same day, God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals. So God created human beings in his own image, a male and a female. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. I have given you everything that has life. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. Evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. On the seventh day, God had finished his creation, so he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. Did anyone notice what the Bible tells us God said after each day in the creation story? That's right, God stepped back and saw that it was good. And Genesis also tells us that we are all given a job by God. We're all supposed to look after and care for the world we live in. But we haven't been looking after it and respecting it as we should do, have we? I've got a couple of important questions for you. What are some of the ways in which we need to change things so that we aren't damaging our planet? And what can each of us do in our everyday lives to make those changes? So as we listen to our worship song, I want to encourage you to think about those questions, to think about what you can do. i
God, thank you so much for the most amazing home that you have given us. We think it is beautiful. We are sorry for where we haven't respected and cared for it. Please help us to make a difference and take care of it. Amen. Let's join together now with our school prayer. Dear God, help us to make good decisions to be the best learners we can be. Give us plenty of opportunities and let us cherish them. Help us to be kind, sharing and loving and to treat everyone equally. Help us to care for the wonderful environment we live in as well as others and ourselves while giving us the power to conquer life's challenges. Help us to be grateful and not greedy. Thank you for all the happiness and joy you bring us. Amen. Amen. Remember, no one is too small to make a difference. See you next week. Bye.